after lunch, <laughs> trying to get re-energized. If there is such a thing, re-energizing after lunch. Um, my topic is a little different from the other topics. I mean, we've heard strategy, we've heard business model changes, and we've heard all these cool things in line with the big rethink. But my presentation is going to be a little different because it kind of focuses on our greatest assets. How many times have you seen a CEO or a big shot talk about people are our greatest asset? We've all seen or heard that. And I often say, I would love to be the reporter that, that follows up. My, I would have a follow-up question. Tell me how your company exemplifies and enhances your greatest asset. I've had an opportunity to ask leaders that, and they stumble and kind of give me the talking points and all those kinds of things. But I want you to think of this. You could have the best strategy in the world. Your smart people could have figured out the best technology. But if you don't have the people that's engaged, that understands the purpose, you're going to struggle. So this is why I love the concept of the big rethink. And what the big rethink basically means for all leaders in the room is that your old way of doing business is archaic. How are we going to do business in this new dynamic? Because the old ways you're doing it, my college roommate to COVID, but I said for organization, it was kind of a gift. Understand the context of that. It was a gift because it's forcing us to rethink people and how are we going to do that. So my task over the next 9.35 minutes is to get you to rethink your relationship with your workers who are going to carry out all the big talk that was done earlier. Is your organization fit for the future? I mean, we all said we're going to eat better, we're going to work out, we're going to do this. How long does that last? But you know, when you've got billions and billions of dollars at stake, this is the key. You're going to have to figure out how am I going to energize my people? One of my prior roles was the CEO of a great place to work in Dubai. And I look at the numbers and the data sets and all these kinds of things and I realize that People are going to drive it. There was research done that showed that if you use a four-point rating system, there's a 20% differential between a four and a three and a two and a one. Envision a one, highly disengaged. How much productivity are you getting out of there? Not a lot. Take a look at this. 44% of executives rank change in nature of work as the top business model disruptor. So it doesn't care about your big strategy pieces. Your employees could care less unless they're engaged. 84% of market value of S&P companies, the tangible assets are created by people. And a shout out to the young lady I met who works for S&P wherever she is. I met her earlier as I was coming back. Bad hires cost the company $8,000 a day. 70% of employees' motivation is, is influenced by his and her manager. How many times have you worked for a manager you could not wait to quit? Show of hands. Well, maybe not because maybe that boss is here. <laughs> but you know what I mean when I say that because if you're working for a manager, you don't care about the big picture. You're just trying to figure out a way to get out of here. Candidate experience. What is it like to apply for a job? I worked with a lot of HR companies and I said, have you ever applied for a job at your company? Apply for a job at your company and then you go apply for a job at all your competitors, which gives me the best experience. 70 percent, 50 percent of people leave a job to get away from us. 
us. You know who us is? The room. Uh, we create an experience that people want to work with us. I read an article last night about a young lady that was being headhunted for this big position. She said, I'm not going to leave because here I was able to determine my days of work. Two family, I mean, uh, husband, wife, both work. She decided to work on a Saturday and take a Wednesday off. Her company says, you design your work. She said, why would I leave? I have everything I need here. So when you talk about this people quotient, it's going to be important. Stat from UAE, 75% of the people are considering losing their job, leaving their job. So it's important. So I'm reading a book now, uh, I forget the title of it now, The Death Behind Getting a Job. 70, the vast majority of heart attacks are on Monday morning. Why is that? Sunday night. I gotta go deal with this again. How many of you have had Sunday night angst? You may not want to hold your hand up because maybe your boss is here. Sunday night, you're struggling. You're struggling because you don't want to go do, deal with that. So my my uh, point to leaders is that you have to understand that because if, when you understand that, you can have all the topics that you're going to talk about for blockchain. Technology, absolutely nothing. If you want to win the race, if your people are not into you, all the data backs it up. All the data backs it up. So all the models of reinvention and work, all of this. But here's the key. I love this slide. If you're talking big talk, you know, big talk. Sweet, big talk. What's the people component of that? Because the people are going to drive it. If you have a workforce that 34, 40% are engaged, which means the vast majority of them are not engaged, <laughs> good luck with that one. So we need to spend some time, as much time as we spend on the strategy and the big talk, because the big talk is going to have to be driven by the people inside of your organization. And that drives people results. That's the new dynamic. So when it says the big rethink, we have to rethink it. If you want to win or be in the race, you're going to have to rethink it. Things have changed. The pendulum has swung. And if you don't offer flexibility to your people, and you're still in a fixed mindset, I saw an interview with Jamie Dimon, who I met in New York. I lived between New York and Dubai. And Jamie was saying that he wants everybody back into the office. They built this big edifice on Park Avenue. If you ever go to New York, Park Avenue is the address. We have all of these cool designs and all these things. We want everybody back in, and that's just not going to happen. We want flexibility. So you can still continue on the fixed mindset, trying to anchor before the big rethink. You're not going to win. You're not going to win. Because it takes people like us in the room to make sure this happens. You can either decide to hang on to the old way, or you can say, let's try some new things. Let's try flexibility. Because we have open to new ideas. I was the, to give me a little backstory. I was the vice president of human resources for Martha Stewart. During the time she went to jail. But we knew we had to be flexible. I mean, this was, when the news came out that she was convicted, we lost our TV contract, our advertisers ran away, and we were in dire straits. How do we get back on track? Because our people were engaged. And we came to them and said, what do you need from us? We have to lay off the entire TV division. How can we do that and make these people whole? And we looked for ways to do that because these were our people. When we took care of TV, everyone else saw that. 
We had no turnover during that period because people said, we're going to stay here and make sure this works. So I say to you, the old mindset has to change. So here's the old dynamic. You have, how many of you all have heard, if you'll ever listen to an earnings call, shareholder value? Yes. Then customers? But who's at the bottom? Employees. Richard Branson says, employees first. They take care of the customers, revenue-wise, and shareholder value is there. The dynamics have changed. And if leaders don't realize that, you're going to struggle. You're going to lose key people. When you see people leaving and you look at turnovers, of t turnover inside of an organization, I always ask them, the first slice when you look at turnover is to look to see connected to the data set of performance management. Are these people key people? If it's key people, the three and four category, you're losing your next level of leadership. It's as simple as that. So we've heard B to B. We've heard B to C. Here's the new one. What's the E stand for? Employee. Say it a little louder. Thank you. That's still weak, but I'll take that because I'm running out of time here. B to E, employees, leaders. Take a look at this slide. Take a look at this slide because this is what it's about in the new dynamic. We can hold on to the past or we can move to the future. We can be rigid and say, I want everyone back in, or we say, you know what, you tell us how you want to do this. If you give people an opportunity to, to in the decision-making process, what you're going to find is that even if they don't get what they want, they feel that they will listen to. So, old way, new way. Your choice. You have a workforce dynamic today, which is comprised of all of this. You can't use a one-size-fit-all anymore. It is over. Leaders, as, I, as my father would say, big shots, it's over with. And you're going to have to rethink the dynamic inside of your organization. Top three leadership dynamic uh, post-COVID, empathy and compassion. Who are you putting in charge of people? When you promote people, make sure there's a component of technical skills and people skills. Are you offering flexibility? Are you transparent and sharing? The same way that leaders share today, my question would have been, have you shared this with your people in an all hands on meeting to say, here's what we're facing, here's what we need to do? Because that's what's going to need, that's what's going to be needed to happen. Leadership development is a journey and not a destination. That means we leaders, you have to read more. You have to read case studies. You have to stay in school. School means you look at interviews and you wonder, what would you ask if that person was there? I got it, I got it. Cool. Stay in focus on getting better. The big rethink, make your organization fit for the future. Thank you. Good timing, yeah. <laughs> I was watching the clock. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>